Welcome to Planning, Management, and Leadership for Health IT, Overview of the Strategic Planning Process. This is Lecture A, IT Plans and Organizational Alignment. In this presentation, we'll look at what an information technology strategic plan is, why it matters in the context of today's healthcare IT environment, and some of the steps in creating the IT plan. The objectives for this unit, IT plans and organizational alignment, are to describe what an IT plan is and some of the typical component parts of this plan, to describe why it's often difficult to align IT and organizational goals. In the next lecture, we will look at the component parts of an IT plan. An IT plan, sometimes called a Strategic Information Systems Plan, is a set of IT-specific programs or projects that help an organization achieve its business goals. Strategic Information Systems Planning is done with a group of cross-functional, meaning clinical, business, IT, and administrative staff. Often, people refer to the output of the Strategic Information Systems Planning process as simply the IT plan of an organization. Herb Smaltz and Randy Carpenter are two healthcare CIOs who have excelled in the area of healthcare IT strategic planning. They describe tenets for forming an effective IT strategy in healthcare by making the following points. IT strategy should be business-driven, meaning it's not driven by the IT department. It's a strategy that supports the overall business, in our case, the hospital or medical practice. Demand for most IT initiatives should be known by those conducting the planning, and finally, IT strategic initiatives should be prioritized by both the business and IT components along the dimensions of risk and value. It should be noted here that a list of projects the IT organization is working on is actually not the strategic plan. In other words, a document that describes the project descriptions, timetables, and budgets is actually a tactical plan. As an overview, the tactical plan is a short-term plan that describes immediate needs to propel the operations of the organization. The strategic plan is the link between the organizational strategy and the supporting IT infrastructure necessary to carry out the strategy. IT plans are important because they do several things for the organization. Number one, they help support the organization's goals. For instance, if a hospital were looking to enter into an ACO arrangement with several other healthcare providers, it would need to know that its clinical and administrative systems that generate, store, and analyze data will be available to support that endeavor. The plan may suggest that the timing of the projects and initiatives already underway in the current IT plan may support the formation of an ACO. Or it may suggest that waiting one year until some of the current IT projects are completed would be better. Second, IT plans can help guide organizational decision-making across time. Many projects begun in the first year of an IT plan have a three-year window before they're finished. Other projects will only take six months. The problem is, many of these projects have dependencies upon one another. In other words, Y project can't start until X is completed, and Z project has the highest stakes of any project and will be dependent on a successful outcome of X and Y projects. Organizationally, it is important that decision-makers have a roadmap or calendar that will help them understand where resources are being used, when new projects may begin, and what priority a new project will have on the list. Finally, the Strategic Information Systems planning process itself can be used to align IT programs and projects and with organizational goals. Because the process requires thinking about organizational direction and priorities, the IT department must consciously align its projects to meet those goals. And while most textbooks, articles, and individuals will agree that aligning organizational and IT goals is very important, 
it remains a difficult task to perform. There are several common pitfalls that should be considered in trying to attain alignment. First of all, expectations differ because of many impassioned stakeholders' needs. The planning process can also be risky. Ideally, all of our estimates for information technology projects will be quantifiable, but they're often driven from a business strategy that is more of an approximation. For instance, if an organization believes they will be opening up a new service line, like interventional cardiology, it will have a lot of estimates about what it takes to get that service line up and off the ground and running as a functional part of the business. But the estimates could be inadequate, and this usually affects the IT strategy, meaning there might not be enough workstations or monitors or bandwidth to support the end users in interventional cardiology. The outcomes of proposed projects can have many varied implications for an organization. Managing people's expectations about the scope and outcome of the strategic planning process is essential. Also, strategic alignment between IT and the business of healthcare can be precarious because of the past performance of ill managed projects. Perhaps a former IT product did not deliver as promised, or the workflow processes of a constituent group were completely overlooked, and this caused problems on the back end during a go live of a new system. Problems like these can cause project overruns and create problems with distribution of human, capital, and operational resources. Finally, IT alignment is difficult to achieve because of the balance of power within an organization. Some CIOs and CEOs enjoy a good working relationship, whereby they are considered equal partners at the planning table. Some organizations have a formally recognized IT leader. However, an informal but charismatic clinical leader may hold more of the decision-making power with the leadership team in an organization. What's important for healthcare IT professionals to understand, whether they're new to the industry or veterans, is that alignment of expectations is a significant issue that leaders must confront. Leadership means getting people behind an idea in a coordinated fashion. On the next series of slides, we'll discuss a generic strategic planning process and the implications it has for those charged with implementing the plan. Before we go through the steps involved in creating a strategic plan, it's important to look at two very important facts about the IT planning process. First, in order for an IT plan to be successful, the planning process itself must include multiple stakeholders, not just those from the IT department. For instance, planning for future needs of nurses and physicians should certainly involve multiple stakeholders from each group, and not just at the management level. The people who are in the trenches should be involved in the planning process as well. Second, remember that planning is only part of the process. If the IT planning life cycle is not clearly communicated, it might as well have never happened. This visual gives an overview of the IT planning process. The first thing you should know about most IT planning processes is that they're typically represented in a diagram like this one. This is only one example used for illustrative purposes. The planning process is very often iterative and will contain overlaps. For instance, many of the same processes represented here might actually be happening at the same time if an organization is both planning for the sunset of one product or is in the middle of an implementation of another. To re-emphasize the life cycle or iteration theme, when a new product is brought live in an organization, we call it the dawn of the new product. When it's time to retire the system, we call it sunsetting the product. Likewise, any of the boxes represented in this slide may have 10 to 15 different planning steps. When you drill down into it, you can get lost or overwhelmed in the complexity of the planning process. but it's still very necessary. A good IT planning process 
helps an organization identify IT initiatives that help support the organization's strategy. Let's move on to the next few slides where we'll look at the component parts of the IT planning process. The assessment of internal information systems, referred to as IS, or information technology, referred to as IT, is pretty much what it sounds like. This is an inward look at the IS organization's current capabilities. It's a snapshot of how things look today. This may be a time where the IT leadership considers things like current staffing levels, what is the status of the employees, who is retiring, etc., from a project perspective, it's time to look at the projects that are underway, projects that are scheduled to be completed, and projects that are planned for the immediate future. From a systems perspective, the IS leadership is looking at all current systems that are being supported. This would also be the time that they're looking at which systems need to be upgraded, which are scheduled to be sunsetted by the vendor, and which systems will likely need to be replaced altogether. The next phase in the IT planning process is taking a look at what's going on in the organization. An organization could be in crisis mode, meaning it's just been purchased or is on the chopping block, or it could be in maintenance mode or even growth mode, acquiring a new hospital, expanding a service line, building a new hospital to account for growth in a geographic area. The most important thing to consider here is that any one of these modes will play a big role in what IT projects are slated and selected. During this process, the clinical and business objectives are reviewed and strategy formulations begin to take shape. In reviewing all clinical and business objectives of the organization, a very careful eye should be paid to the privacy and security considerations of the strategy. What may seem like a great marketing idea could have a significant impact on patient privacy. Likewise, a decision to move a physician practice to a cloud-based computing environment could pose significant security risks. While privacy and security considerations shouldn't drive strategy per se, no strategy should be conceived that doesn't consider these elements in the decision-making process. This is an important set of boxes because many healthcare organizations, sometimes referred to as HCOs, all over the country, are now taking a very critical look at their priorities, and many of those will include taking advantage of Medicare and Medicaid incentives offered for IT adoption as part of the ARA or MACRA legislation. ARA, in its own way, is forcing HCOs to align clinical, business, and IT strategies, and it hasn't always worked this way in the past. This next set of boxes focuses on the organizational strategy formulation and looks at the IT solutions needed to enable change. But first, the current technical or systems state must be examined. Some of the questions that might be asked are, how many existing or legacy systems already need to be replaced or upgraded this year? What is our vendor's level of support? Do we think any of the vendors will be purchased by another company this year? Will that mean a system conversion on our part? What regulatory changes will happen this year that have systems implications? A good example of this is that changes brought on by the High Tech Act led to changes in the HIPAA regulations. These changes made the regulations more stringent. In looking at the proposed business strategy, or the future state, IT solutions also need to be addressed. Questions that IT leaders might ask include, do we have the staff to support all the changes that are being proposed? Does our current operational budget support the new staff that will be needed? Or does it allow money to hire consultants to design systems to support the future strategy? Does the future level of system support increase? Or decrease? Is our organization equipped to handle the risk brought on by the management of the new proposed systems? The answers to these questions are what form the gap or hole between the current and future system states, which leads us to the next box in the IT planning process. 
This middle process, selecting the candidate IT initiatives, has a box all to itself. This process must be managed very well. Many stakeholders will have what seems to be a significant and compelling IT initiative. But the mature IT organization must understand that not all of these can be implemented. In other words, each department in the hospital or clinic may want a system that meets its own needs. For instance, an OBGYN practice wants a system specific to its needs. The orthopedic clinic wants a system specific to its needs, and so on. But it's nearly impossible to fund and execute every project. Ideally, organizations will find that by looking at candidate IT projects in aggregate, they can find opportunities to share IT projects. For instance, if 300 new CPUs need to be replaced and the manufacturer's price point breaks or gets cheaper at 450 CPUs, this may help another clinical department get the new CPUs it needs to run the new software it wants to purchase. Ultimately, candidate IT projects reveal that there are commonalities in needs and a project that one department was considering can actually be shared by several departments. This alignment is one of the best possible outcomes of an IT strategic planning process. It is important that after the IT initiatives are listed, that they are prioritized according to the known demands of and risks to the organization. Finally, we arrive at the step whereby the IT plan is truly linked with the organizational goals. Ultimately, each project in the total organizational portfolio of projects should support the strategic goals of the organization. Each candidate initiative that is selected should have a business case, meaning that it should have clear linkages to supporting the organizational strategy and collectively the projects should drive the infrastructure support initiatives as well. A business case should answer the question, is this project worthwhile or not? the justification for the project, how it relates to overall strategy, its expected impact, how it will be financed, and how it will be sustained are all part of making the business case. The business case will be referred to throughout a project's life cycle at the organization. It's not something developed during the planning process and then forgotten. We reach the outcome of the planning process when we arrive at the Strategic Information Technology Plan. This plan identifies information needs that support the organization's goals and objectives. Ultimately, it should support the mission of the organization. Even if one's role in an organization does not involve conducting or leading the strategic plan, it is important to understand the background or mechanics of the decision-making process of the organization. Organizations that plan carefully and strive to use information technology that will support the organization's mission are in better alignment. These organizations have made the leap from separating IT from the business objectives to understanding how it can actually be an enabler of overall organizational strategy. In the healthcare industry, Unlike many other industries who were early adopters of technology, we are now seeing that information technology is a utility, like electricity or gas. We expect it to be there for us, but the power and gas industries have been at this for years. They've perfected, or nearly perfected, a process to make sure that people who rely on these utilities can depend on them. The healthcare world is slowly catching up and a careful process for planning IT investments is necessary to manage expectations of the people who rely on the technology. Now that we have looked at the individual steps in an IT planning process, we will close with some guiding principles of the planning process itself. Well-evolved, successful IT organizations usually see IT planning as integral or essential to everything they do. M.J. Earle studied several organizations in England and other places in the United Kingdom and discovered that more mature organizations had some common characteristics. The first is that IT was not thought of as a separate process that was segmented out of the discussions of the organization's strategy. The author of this study 
suggested that there may be no separate IT committee. The second characteristic is that IT planning is conducted continually to mimic the often chaotic or rapidly changing environments of the organizations. The third characteristic ensured that, to quote from the study, IT leadership understood the business plans and strategies and constraints. What this means is that IT leadership worked in concert with the rest of the organization and the IT budget and the tactical plans were derived from the overall strategy setting sessions. Finally, Earl found that well-evolved IT organizations placed emphasis on enduring themes rather than intermittent initiatives. An initiative may be something along the lines of improving costs in a service line, whereas a theme may be to create a technical architecture and process that supports, analyzes, and manages cost containment for the organization. In closing, it's important to remember that what we do in IT departments should not drive how we plan. Our planning should actually drive any implementation that we consider or actually undertake. Most IT departments are fairly proud of the IT plans and how they enable organizational change. So while the consultants may have seen a particular problem numerous times and think they know what is best, they are not driving organizational strategy. They are only supporting it. Likewise, when new consultants or companies help advise on a project or strategy, we should be careful to show the IT plan to them. Ultimately, it should help them gain a better understanding of the goals of both the IT department and the organization. Finally, understand that it's rare for the IT plan and the organization's strategic plan to stay aligned forever. Planning means change, and change requires the resources of the entire organization. This concludes Lecture A of IT Plans and Organizational Alignment. In summary, the IT strategic plan is the link between the organizational strategy and the supporting IT infrastructure necessary to carry out that strategy.